beautiful morning to y'all there the program is the daily on echo television where we keep you updated with all the news and current affairs from our papers this morning i am Sene like and i'll be doing the program together with rachel tansi good morning good morning Sene. hi doing? i'm fine how about you i'm great thank you so much and to our viewers, please do remember we are live on Facebook and on YouTube. You can join us live there. Drop your comments or your contribution on any of the story that is of interest to you this morning. And we will be starting with the first paper, which is the Vanguard newspaper. On the Vanguard newspaper, all new NARA notes remain legal. Tender statement coming from CBN. You can find more details on page 19. What Buhari's ex-ministers are saying about him shocking coming from Kuka. And on bill, ex-CBN governor in Mefile arrives home after 151 days in detention. You can find more details on page 19. We have an advertorial on page 26 that says Governor Ozodima said to Ghana 68% total votes as opposition parties squabble. You can find more details of the survey inside the paper. The big story on the paper, exchange rate, NECA, experts disagree on federal government's target recommend ways forward how they intend to do it is still unclear coming from amule bay federal government should not give exchange rates targets coming from iwizu it will lead to fall in inflation a statement coming from kurfi world bank orders would help to boost foreign exchange earnings coming from omodion you can find more details of the big story on page five Senate to probe purchase of 5 billion Naira yacht. You can find details on page 9. And we have a column on page 8 that says Daily Trust publishers Kabiru Yusuf returns as NPAN president. We have a picture story. EFCC brings MFLA to court where we can see EFCC operatives with former CBN governor Mr. Godwin MFLA on arrival at the FCT High Court in Abuja yesterday. And also a picture story showing interactive session with the CBN governor Cardoso and other chief executives. And that's all the news on Vanguard newspaper. On Blueprint newspaper, we have the WinBig promo, First Bank re um, returns customers. I take that story again. We have the WinBig promo, First Bank reward customers with 117 million Naira price. You can find more detail of that promo on page 22. Oil manufacturing top 8.03 trillion Naira bank loan in the first half of 2023. Only 20 of the 85 directors passed permanent secretary promotion exam. This is coming from the HOS. You can find more of that on page 13. Malage pledges federal government commitment to take off of the UNESCO Institute in Nigeria. Yesterday, remember, they went for that summit. And here we're seeing what they intend to do about that. You can find more of that story on page 13. The big story, Abdul Salami Committee to Parties and Supporters by Yelsa Imo Kogi of Cycle Polls Not Do or Die insists democracy better than dictatorship. Identity, politics, violence, dominating political landscape. This is coming from the CDD. And you can find more detail of that on page 6. And I think it is imperative that they emphasize on the issue of the fact that elections are not do or die with all the insecurity we're seeing in this state. In mobile San Kogi state, it seems some of these leaders are thinking it's a do or die affair. So it is important that they take this um signing of this peace accord very seriously you can find more of that on page six all and new narrow notes remain like a tender this is coming from the cbn declares with a writer saying court grant and defeated bill of 151 days after arrest and it's also important because we're seeing that there seems to be cash scarcity in banks and also in pos so it is important that the cbn say that so for those who are holding the notes in their house it's important that you deposit the notes so that it gets to circulate around still on blueprint newspaper coming from anambra state 322 killed buried in mass grave orders missing this is a report coming from the Truth Commission. Tinibu appoints 20 commissioners from the MPC. More details found on page 5. MPA launches $1.1 billion port rehabilitation plan for competitiveness. You can find more of that 
on page 22, we have a picture story where we can see the president um, during the supplementary budget at the presidential visa in Abuja. Yesterday, you can do well to grab the paper and read more detail of any of the story that is of interest to you. On Nigerian Tribune, why we cannot increase electricity tariff now coming from the federal government. Olubada, Ladoja, Ibadan, Obas hold advisory council meeting. I bear no grudge against anybody. Statement coming from Ladoja explains why he challenged Makinde and others in court. You can find details on page 11. Tenable signs 2.17 trillion naira supplementary budget, 30% for defense and security, 35% dedicated to the provision of critical infrastructure to be allocated to works, FCT, housing, and urban development. More details can be found on page 17. The big story pays a call for off-season polls. Seriousness commitment of candidates in doubt. A statement coming from Abdul Salami. Expects them to obey rules, honor accord, ensure free fair polls. Commends INEC for adequate preparation. NSCDC deploys 22,600 personnel in Emo, Kogi, Bayelsa. FRSC deploys 4,500 and we have 137, 973 party agents to participate in polls. Report coming from INEC. You can find details of the big story on page 14. After 151 days in detention, court admits MFLA to bail. A Fanny Ferry criticizes NAS over purchase of 160 million Naira SUV for lawmakers. You can find details on page 17, and that's all the news on Nigerian Tribune. On the Punch newspaper, we have five, uh, $51 billion debt. Federal government rules dwelling revenue. Reps condemn needless loan and contracts. The right of loan that the government promised to block leakages lawmakers decry high debt servicing detail found on page 19. And we also have the IPAN returns Kabiru as president and Miruwa joined ex school. You can find more on page 8. The big story says off season polls electronic coalition in Lagos says INEC police won NLC. With the rider INEC say IRF not for resort coalition. Labor leaders advise against intimidating voters. Ozodima and others absent at a peace accord. Dire Silva clash. Emo workers bank shunned the strike. That is to say, yesterday they were supposed to start the strike. But here we're seeing that Emo workers and bank have shunned the strike. So you can find more detail of that on page 2, 8, and 13. OB fault enables 2.17 trillion Naira supplementary budget. You want to know why he did that? Find more detail on page 9. All bank notes remain legal tender, says the CBN. And also we have UK police probe suicide of British-born Nigerian. Detail found on page 4. Federal government stop electricity tariff hike insists on subsidy. Detail found on page 9. And that's all on the Punch newspaper. On the Guardian newspaper, inflation, foreign exchange, many tariffs compound Nigeria's trade wars. You can find more details on page six, page six rather. Knox has sustainable science 2.1 trillion naira supplementary budget. You can find details on page three. Off cycle polls, coca tax, INEC on transparency as candidates sign peace accord. NPAN decries rising hardship or just sustainable to engage media stakeholders. Lasso suspends Dean over certificate racketeering Senate probes for the land admissions. You can find more details on page 4. Aviation Union Sean Emo Bond flies declare Uzodima person non grata. You can find more details on page 29. Federal government probes extension of discourse licenses, false power privatization. You can find more of the business details on page 18. AFCC arrives 11 OAU students for internet fraud. An LASG seals warehouses stores at International Trade Fair Complex. You can find more details on page 8 and that's all the news on the Guardian newspaper. On Daily Sun newspaper, still talking about election on Emo State, poll favors Governor Ozo Dima to win by 68%. Other parties by 32%, you can find detail on page 28. 
Hooker exposes Buhari's ex aide, says former government officials standing shocking tales about the ex president. We want to know more about what those tales are. Do well to find detail on page six. PDP must address costs of obese exit failure at the poll. This is coming from Bode George with detail found in the paper. Tinibu signs 2.17 trillion 2023 supplementary budget into law. Still coming from Imo State, labor to ground Abuja, Lagos Airport says no going back. Insists Ozodima not welcome at any Nigerian airport detail found on page 28 and 30. Atiku drums support for Dire Anyawu Malayi. You can find more of that on page 13. Last two room of Dean of Student Affair over certificate racketeering detail found on page 28 as well. Nigeria discovered new crook oil grade with the writer saying reps move to probe shortfalls in the oil revenue. And coming from Kogi State, Kogi Guba APC Odudu right high. You can find more of that also on page 19. We are also having the president in a picture story here with the birth certificate to Little Aisha during the launch of the National Geopasha Data Repository Digital Civil Registration and Vital Statistics System and inauguration of the National Coordination Committee for the CRVS in Abuja yesterday. You can find more detail of that in the paper. The last story on the front page of the paper is on the MPAN elect new ESCO return Yusuf as the chairman with detail found on page 29 and that's all on Daily Sun newspaper. A new telegraph, CBN mandates banks to meet customers' cash need, advises against panic withdrawal. Oil price crashes to three months low as demand concerns mount. You can find details on page 8. Tenable signs 2.1 trillion naira supplementary budget. Innocent to establish electric vehicle factory in Nigeria. You can find details on page 26. Reps to federal government declare state of emergency on illegal mining. Attack on NLC President Aviation Union Blacklist Emo Flight Nationwide. You can find more details on page 7. The big story on the paper in Kaduna 121 kidnapped students ransomed for 250 million naira. This is Khan revealing. Says student who escaped from kidnappers then didn't opt to remain with bandits. KDSG is set to resettle displaced Southern Kaduna communities. Unimate best in standing against terrorism. A statement coming from Indume. You can find details on page 228 and 30. Off cycle, Guba NSCDC deploys 22,600 personnel. Court admits ex CBN Governor MFLA to bill. And at ATBUTH performs first kidney stones laser surgery. You can find more details on page 30. And on 2023 poll, how NWC caused PDP monumental failure a statement coming from Bode George. You can find more details of his statement on page 3. And on budget for 2022, Tracker uncovers 8.6 billion naira paid to 26 fraudulent contractors. Want AFCC, ICPC to probe and persecute offenders. And at the downside of the paper, we have a study that says kids who drink soda each day likely to try alcohol. So it's important for parents to cut down sugar and soda for children. You can find more details on page 28. And that's all news on New Telegraph newspaper. On the Nation newspaper, survey project Ozodema's victory with 68%. The writers say roll rocks opposition. Emi Fede out of custody after securing the bill. Banker bore in court. You can find more of that story on page 4. All new Naira notes remain legal tender. CBN reaffirms. You can find that in the paper as well. Bandic took 250 million Naira ransom to free 121 Baptist school pupils. More detail can be found on page 27. And on Bayelsa, Imo, and Kogi off cycle 2023 election, we are having the writer saying Shaitima urges vote for Silva to end youth unemployment. Panel one candidate who failed to sign the peace agreement in Imo. 
at Hugo Rally support for PDP candidates. You can find the stories on the uh, page straight to eight. And you begin to ask stories. If panel is warning candidates who failed to sign the peace accord agreement in Imo State, and we're seeing one of the papers saying that the governor of the state, Hope Ozodima, was absent during the signing of it. So, what is the penalty for that this is a question that Nigerians would like to ask because over the years Richard I'm quite concerned because even before before the off um, cycle election we had during the presidential election there was a peace accord in fact it got that bad that it had to be a second one again mm -hmm. and I asked the question what happened to the first peace accord and these are part of the things that made the second one why because a lot of candidates and supporters were beginning to create nuisance and also causing chaos and confusion and there was a need to call them back again to sign. And you now ask the question, for those who are absent from signing it, what happened? Over and over, we've seen Abdul Salami coming out to say that candidates need to learn to be peaceful. This is not a do or die affair. We keep repeating this and we'll not get tired of saying it. It's not a do or die affair. I mean, if you are not welcome or if your state or the people of your state do not like you, I think it's a time for you to go back, reflect again and say, what can I do better? And how can I come out stronger to actually serve my people? Because over the years, we've seen leaders who are just bent on getting power by hook or by crook and they do not care who they step on eventually so with all of this panel are warning candidates who fail to actually sign and we're also seeing that um, a survey have shown that hope was a might actually leading by 68 percent now beyond the survey what what is it that the people want i think this is a question we've had that here in plaza state i mean yesterday a lot of things happened where some party, precisely PDP supporters, came out and were plankers and actually saying that what the court is doing is not what they like. And I remember you and I, Rachel, saying the fact that when are we going to have in the history of Nigeria that after an election, we don't need to go to court. The court, it is already obvious that what the people voted is what they wanted eventually. But then we always have to resolve to court. Why? Because something along the way did not go as it should be. So... Let us keep our fingers crossed and let us see what will be the penalty for the people who fail to show up during the peace accord signing. You know, Sele, they won't show up to the peace accord signing because, first of all, it's not put in a way to be mandatory. If it was an electoral law that if you do not sign this peace accord, you will be disqualified for something that harsh and you have to follow the peace accord, then perhaps we'll have these politicians not missing it and signing it. And not only will mm. they sign it, but they will take it seriously. And it will never stop being do or die for them because it's not them who will die at the end of the day. It's do or die for them because it's not their life at stake. Mm. It's, a, it's the life of those they instigate. Is the life of those they pay to do all what they want them to do is the life of the youths that they use as hoodlums that ends up being lost. So it will keep being a do or die affair for these politicians mm -hmm. unless the narrative is being changed, unless things happen in a way that you put them in the position that this peace accord is not just signed for signing sake, but that there are penalties and consequences that come for it, that once anything goes wrong and there is enough investigation to know where it came from, there will be their penalty and consequences that they will dare not, but rather preach the peace, sign the accord, mean it, and then stick with it until we make certain things in a way that people don't make it an option, but rather it becomes compulsory, an electoral act, something mandatory, something that puts them in the position that they have to adhere to it until we place things like that, until we create our system to be that strict, then we are still going to keep seeing this problem and of course it will remain do or die because they are not the one dying at the end of the day it's somebody out there dying on their behalf in the name of politics so it will continue to be do or die because their life is not at stake but i believe that we can wake up as nigerians and say i'm not dying for a politician i'm not going to be um, a, a change driver when it comes to chaos but rather for peace and all of that then maybe we will wake up to seeing political rallies, elections, everything around politics in Nigeria, not do or die, because people have woken up and saying, no, I am not going to die for a cause like this. Well, let's keep our fingers crossed and see how this whole thing will turn out to be. Still on the Nation newspaper, we have Senate and House Agreement raises student loan to 10 billion naira. 
With the right I urge, I came drop as president signed 2.17 trillion Naira supplementary budget and Senep um, launches proof. You can find detail of that on the front page and also on page four. NLC strike fails to hold an emo with the rider offices open, airport in operation, power court enters day seven because we will record that the power has been out since last week when they actually planned on that strike in emo state. Power minister threatening these calls and gen calls with license revocation operators to sign performance bond. You can find detail on page on the front page and also on page four. And we have budget 26 contractors blows away with 8.6 million or billion naira mobilization cash. Budget is saying that about 26 contractors blows away with 8.6 billion naira mobilization cash. And you begin to ask questions who was the person who brought these contractors and how did they get there with such a huge amount of money that was meant for one contraction or another, where well, you can do well to grab the paper and read more detail of any of the story that is of interest to you. On the Daily Times, Yusuf, Ibru, Abogun, Onusiki, others return as NPA and executives. The big story on the paper, contractors disappear with 8.6 billion naira in nine states. Statement coming from budget, the writer under the story, Kebi tops in capital project execution, Bauchi leads in constituency project, and we have abysmal performance by many southern states. You can find more details on page four. Ex-CBN Governor Emefile, a free man after five months in detention. There must be an end to detention without trial, says judge. You can start with the details on the front page and continue on page two. Report in Dykes 31 governors over local government financial autonomy. The vote of only eight LP senators against the cars wouldn't stop the National Assembly statement coming from an Edo senator concerning the jeeps for lawmakers. You can find details on page 5. Tinibu signs 2.1 trillion Naira 2023 supplementary budget. And at the downside of the paper, questions for Education Minister Jump Registrar VC over alleged admission vegetarian Senate summons them. You can find details on page 9. And we have a picture story where we can see the ex Governor Godwin and Mephile in court yesterday together with other EFCC officials. And that's all news on the Daily Times newspaper. Okay, this story is actually bothers me a little, or not really a little, but to an extent. The fact that report indicts 31 governors over the local government financial autonomy. Yesterday, we saw the same number, about 31 governors are being dice for financial autonomy for the National Assembly. And then that's the state, state assemblies in their various states. And you begin to ask questions, what really is the problem? We keep talking about the fact that there is a need for separation of power, number one. We keep talking about the fact that every arm of government needs to know its place and how it should act. And we keep seeing governors interfering, doing what they feel like doing, and hindering the state house of assemblies from doing what they are supposed to do. I mean, this issue of local government autonomy has been going on for, I mean, it's getting to two years right now. And ever since it was being signed into law that the local government should be given financial autonomy to be on their own. They don't have to keep coming to the state government Every little thing they need, they have. And then we keep talking about the fact that most of the development we see in the rural areas is bent on the local government. They are responsible for that. So why do we have governors interfering with the financial autonomy of the local government? Are you feeling threatened by the local government that when they are on their own, they will actually outshine you? Or will you now expose some of your lapses in the state level to show the fact that you have not been doing what you are supposed to do? And you are afraid that when the local governments are now on their own or they have a financial national autonomy they'll be able to do certain things that you have failed to do over the years i went to talk about the fact that the local government workers are not even being paid as they should be the 30,000, not even to talk about the additional 35,000 that have been added rachel a lot of the local government workers have not even gotten the 30,000 minimum which is some state so what are we saying as a state i just hope that something will be done if these governors need to be called to order to do the right thing in their various state, I think it will be very, very important because with the way things are going, you do not want the state assemblies to be on their own. No wonder we are seeing that the legislative do not even have so much power. They don't even regard the legislative. Why? Because 
they are being influenced by the executive eventually. So we are hoping that with all of the story, making it on the front page of the paper will not just end on the front page of the paper. But we'll see a probe going on. We'll see more, you know, um, talking about measures being taken to make sure that the right thing is being done by the local government. Control is very addictive, and when it comes to control of money, it is more addictive on a lot of level. And I believe it's only an administration or a governor that is not growth-minded, let me put it like that, that wouldn't want the local government to have autonomy when it comes to their dealings and even their finances. Because this is how it works, is that Im imagine if the president would insist on being in charge of every 36 states con controlling their money controlling their budgeting controlling their funding trust me there won't be crude it will be very slow stagnant or not even visible in the first place now i believe it's the same thing going down to the local government you when you are the governor you will be able to champion the cause for the general state issues and matters and then allow the local government to thrive let's not forget that when allocation comes is both federal government state and local government it means that the state have its own and then the local government have their own also so why are you trying to control what has been allocated specifically to the local government? It doesn't make sense. And that's why I keep saying we will keep seeing this pro problem until our lawmakers wake up and make it compulsory. Because what is the extent? How does it make sense that the FAAC will allocate everybody their allocation and their money monthly? And then the state government keeps that which is for the local government and decide how much gets the local government at the end of the month. Then perhaps there shouldn't be um, allocation from the federal government, that is the FAAC, going to the local government, but rather let it just be capitalized as the state government. Then that is when we will say that, okay, now the state government is in their mercy to think of the little that they will give to the local government. But that is not how it is. So in a lot of ways, we see that we have constitutions, we have policies, we have things put in place to allow growth and development but we refuse to follow them. And then that is why we keep seeing ourselves stagnant and not growing because these things are out plain and simple. Why are we not following it if we want growth to take place? Because whether we like it or not, we have recent happenings where people have to leave their local government to come to the state capital to take um, to be able to have access to health care facilities. But imagine where these allocations go to the local government and they also make a budget and they follow through and they have to go with health, roads, um, every other facility and every other thing. And then in the end, we will have a um, local government thriving and also eyes on the chairman because if they do not come through, they will also be probed. There could be EFCC also watching them or the financial crime body at the state level watching the activities of the local government, council, chairman, and all of that. But we are refusing to adhere to things that we have put out there. And no wonder we will not see an ample amount of growth. So I believe um, when bills are being passed, local government autonomy bill should be passed, passed into law made as a policy, amendment, amended in our constitution and all of that, so that we will stop having this back and forth because I truly think, and many other Nigerians will agree, that local government need autonomy so that we will start seeing some amount of growth in the local government area. Saying it makes you feel as if maybe the local government is not generating any revenue whatsoever. Maybe that is why they have been treated the way they have been treated. Well, we're looking forward to seeing our governors waking up to the fact that the local government needs to be on its own. I mean, talking about their finance. And Rachel, let's not even forget, not as if every allocation that has been given to them is given to the local government at once. No. There's a limit. There's a particular amount that the local government is meant to have access to in a week or in a month. There's particular all of these things have been already been placed clearly so i do not know why the governors are playing very hard to get where well, i hope that they wake up to this reality 
and let the local government be on their own. Well, before we continue with other paper review, we'd love to take a time out at this moment, let you through the stories concerning the peace accord in the three states that will be having the election by Saturday. And also we're seeing that um, the aviation have banned Emo State from actually taking a flight nationwide. So we do not know what they supply, but we'd love to hear what your own view is about all of the stories when we come back from the break. Please stay tuned with us. television we've been looking at a number of stories on the paper and we'd love to hear what your own views are concerning the stories ranging from the off-season election we're having on saturday looking at the fact that cbn have said that the old and the new narrow note is still like a tender so for those who have been rejecting the old note should please take notice of that that the money should be in circulation for those who are holding the new notes in their places i still have rachel tenzer with me in the studio thank you so much rachel You're welcome sarah all right, our number is displayed on your screen. Please do remember to call us, reduce the volume of the TV set when you call us because we would love to hear what you have to say and other viewers at home would love to also hear you as well. And let's try to summarize our point in a minute so other callers can also get the room to call in and air their views. And before the calls come in, let's take a look at the next paper, which is Daily Independent Newspaper. Nigerian banks may lose 25 billion naira to cybercrime by year end. This is a report with the writer saying, as country ranks 16, um, as the country ranks 16, world most affected by internet crime. You can find more of that story inside the paper. Aviation Union shut down Imo Airport over Ajero Imo's governor in Paris. Declare Ozodema personnel non greater at the airport. You can find more of that story on page 7 of the Daily Independent. And on trap form, despite claim federal government yet to pay $800 million to foreign airlines. With the rider Nigeria world highest in block funds. This is a report coming from the IATA. You can find more of that story in the paper. Federal government orders investigation into license extension for discos declared 700 megawatts Saguru plant ready for takeoff. You can find more of that on page 29. Bayelsa Imo Kogi Guba polls. I next shortcoming, not enough reason to give up on democracy. This is coming from Atiku. Our old table prayers because Nigeria must move forward. This is coming from Bode George. You can find more of that on page 7. And we have Tunibu launches digital sensors gathering Porter assures on national population sensors holding suit. Appoint 20 federal commissioners for the MPC. You can find more on page 6. And talking about the former CBN governor, there must be an end to detention without trial, court tells the federal government. Grant the former CBN governor bill after 151 days in detention. Adjourns to November 15 for his arraignment. You can find more of that on page 29. Tinibo signed 2.17 trillion naira supplementary budget into law with detail found on page 7. And also we're still having a report coming from the CBN that says don't reject all Naira notes. You can find more of that on page 7. And that's all on Daily Independent Newspaper. 
on Voice of Liberty, a Memphis granted bill after 151 days in federal government security agency's detention. Tinubu appoints 20 MPC federal commissioners. Labor blacklist emo flight nationwide ahead of November 11 governorship poll. The big story on the paper, Tinubu signs 2.17 trillion naira 2023 supplementary budget into law. President Bola Ahmed Tinubu yesterday signed into law the 2023 2.17 trillion naira supplementary budget following its passage last Thursday by the National Assembly. Obasanjo leads search for alternative democratic system in Africa. And on food security, wheat seeds arrived Nigeria ahead of dry season farming. And I hope this yields better so that wars in Ukraine won't affect the availability of wheat in the country. Tinubu's terrible mistakes plunged Nigerians into misery, a statement coming from Professor Sagay. And at the downside of the paper, old new Naira notes remain legal coming from the CBN. And that's all the news on Voice of Liberty. You know, Rachel, beyond the fact that we hope that the Ukraine and Russia war will not affect the wheat coming into the country then, because we were complaining when the strike, uh, when the war started there, the fact that Nigeria got affected with all the cereals and all of that. I'm more even concerned about the security of farmers in the farmland, Rachel. It's already the harvest time. Now, we've been having pockets of attack. We saw that yes. in Kestina mm -hmm. and also other states where farmers, when to actually yeah, harvest yeah. their crops and they were being attacked on their farmland. So I am even concerned about that as well. So I'm hoping in as much as the federal government is, you know, um, giving the seats to those states where mm. the atmosphere and the weather, the climate yeah. will be suitable for the seed. We should also provide protection for these farmers. They deserve oh. to be protected. And I hope we'll not be having an issue of headers also evading mm -hmm. into the farmland. We've heard situations where after the crops is ripe for harvest, we have, you know, mm -hmm. kettles going in and destroying, causing hay, um, chaos whatsoever. So I am hoping that the federal government will also look into the security of our farmers as they go to the farmland because with this seed being available and there is no security, believe you me, there will you still be still hunger, have, Rachel, yeah, eventually. You know, so I'm hoping that the government will also look into that as well. Let's take a look at the next paper, which is the Daily Asset Newspaper. Tinubu signed 2.1 trillion Naira 2023 supplementary budget. It's most on it's the stories of most of our paper. You can do well to find that story on page two of the Daily Asset. And a big story for the paper says Kogi Emo by Yelsa Paul. Don't complain of funds, Kuka tell INEC. With the rider 18 Guba candidate signed his accord in Kogi State. You can find more detail of that story inside the paper. And I think just not just Kuka, but Nigerians are hoping that INEC will not complain about funds running short during this election. Still on daily asset newspaper, we have Enugu safe for business investment. Imba tells investors you can find more detail of that story. And we have reps query NIPOS over irregularity. And they have 10 billion naira withdrawal. More detail of that found on page 11. Investment in oil and gas fall to 77% to $5 billion in seven years. With the rider Boni, light price rises to $91.16 per barrel in September. You can find detail of that story inside the paper. Benue Assembly decries poor facilities at teaching hospital. You can find more of that story on page 8. And I think this is not just the situation in Benue State, but I think most of the states, the facilities at the teaching hospital is really, really not um, something to be commended about. So I hope that something will be done about that story. You can find more detail of that on page 8. And that's all on the Asset Newspaper. On the matrix, all bank notes issued by CBN remain legal tender statement coming from the CBN governor. Five billion naira presidential yard Senate launches investigation. Tidibu signs 2.17 trillion naira 2023 supplementary budget into law. The big story on the paper, 48 hours ahead of election, heightened tension in Imo state. INEC parties in face of over wrecks, redeployment, labor shutdown, aviation activities in Imo. You can find details on page two. Tinubu appoints 11 new population sense, uh, population commissioners reappoints nine. 
certificate racketeering lasso sacks dean of student affair senate summons gas marketing company boss over 30 billion naira cng project you can find details on page 16. 21 billion prepared for third mainland bridge restoration a statement coming from mahi federal government made 334 billion now from revenue collection in four months coming from customs you can find details on the front page and continue inside the paper we have a picture story which has been on most of our paper tenable launches national geopartial data repository digital system we can see him with a baby um aisha where he's handling her um, certificate to her and that's all the news on the metrics newspaper all right let's take a look at the world of business on business day newspaper bank deposits soar on cbn loan dom accounts with the rider five biggest lenders boost deposit to 53 trillion naira zenet displaces assets from the top post you can find more of that story inside the paper quality seat shortage hampers push for stable food price more detail found inside the paper also we are having another story here that says future of seven trillion dollar electric vehicle market tied to nigeria and others this is coming from additional african development bank partners and developed 20 billion dollar solar power project you can find more detail of that story inside the paper we have a picture story where we can see the african development bank um, president a family additional and then together with um, the former president obasanjo so you can do well to grab the paper and see more details of any story that is of interest to you on Sporting Sun newspaper, criminals attempt to kidnap Neymar's daughter and girlfriend. You can find the details at the back page. Ten years after Golden Eaglets players beg for promised houses. Olaina named in PL Team of the Week. We have a call on the line. All right. Hello. That if things are done well but by those few institutions, then Nigeria Can you be audible, right? please? Shema calling from Kaduna. I have a problem with two institutions in uh, Nigeria. I have a problem with INEC. We can't I have hear this problem call, with huh? If INEC gets it right, then Nigeria will All right. Oh, so we can't hear the caller. So the and call us back. Yes. They really touch the life of people. Democracy is not... Still on the Sporting Sun newspaper, Olaina named NPL Team of the Week. You can find details on page 6. And we have Overmars to face prison sentence over misconduct at Ajax. You can find more details inside the paper. And the big story, El Hatch Diop rates Super Eagles low. Nigeria can't win AFCON 2023. Tips Cote d'Ivoire, Senegal, Morocco to win. You can find details on page 6. Pesero gives Okoye away he AFCON hopes. You can find more details on page 6. We have a caller on the Yes, good morning. Yes, yeah, Shaman calling, calling okay. back. Okay, good morning, Mr. Shaman, Shaman we can back. hear you. I put a question this morning. Yes, Shaman, honestly, as I said, I have a problem with the institution, INEC and judiciary. If INEC can get it right, then Nigeria we're going to move forward. The problem we're having in this country is the crop of leaders that lead most of the institutions. If the leaders or if the people by not seeing the affairs of the institutions are not transparent, are not sincere, then we cannot get it right. What happened in March and February this year about Yakubu, honestly speaking, is an eyesore to all Nigerians. Who knew the person that won the election? The reports the INEC chairman did what he did, and he gave it to who he gave to. So we are saying, Kogi, Dayansa, and Imo elections. Let Nigeria see a transparent election. Let Nigeria see an election that they will embrace. We don't want to be going to tribunal to spend Nigerian money. Nigerian money is meant for infrastructure. It's not meant for run elections and going to tribunal to contest elections. We're supposed to use our money to develop our nation, not to use our money to, to call for lawyers and judges to financing issues that are not supposed to. So I pray that the election that is coming on the 11th of November will be transparent and be credible in the expectation of the 
Nigerians because we are tired of what we are passing through in Nigeria. Because this state happens to be a hot state each time they are having an election. I don't even know why it is like that in Koji State. I pray that Koji people will get it right this time by having a peaceful election in Nigeria. Good morning, my sister, and the Lord the Lord continue to bless you all. Good morning. Thank, Thank you, you very so much, much for your contribution yeah. on that story. It's quite very sad, you know, Rachel, mm. and it's not far fetched from what you and I have been seeing. I think for as long as I can remember, we keep emphasizing the fact that we need leaders that are ready to do the work. And followers also have the right to go and vote. I think it's part of the thing Adul Salami even said during the peace accord. Because when you do not come out to vote, you remember we saw the statistics of people that are coming out to mm. vote. It has dropped down drastically in these three yeah. states. So when you do not come out to vote, you have nobody to blame when you end where we end up having or when you end up having governors that you did not want eventually. So when you come out to vote and then the wrong thing is being given to you, you have the right to say this is not the person we mm. voted for. So we are hoping that INA will keep to their own part of the bargain. You said we are prepared, we want to see that even though we're seeing that they are not mandated to actually put the result electronically mm -hmm. and all of that. But well, just like Fuka said, we hope you not complain of funds. Because enough funds have been given to you for this election. Mm -hmm. We are hoping that this election will be fair. This election will be what the people want eventually. Sure. And we hope that all of these states should not take this election to heart. I keep saying something about followers because when you go to social media, Richard, it will break your heart to see fight between followers. And one thing I keep saying is I have the opportunity, the fact that, believe you me, these politicians are not aware of your fight. They are yeah. friends behind your back. So why are you fighting for them? Nobody is going to applaud you for it. Nobody is going to give you any prize for doing what you do. Just go to the polling unit, vote for the person you feel is capable of the job, yes. and leave the rest to INEC to do their best. When they fail to do that, mm -hmm. then you can hold them accountable. True. But when you not play your own part, you have nobody to hold accountable. Facebook, you, your votes will not be counted there. Whatever social media, your votes will not be counted there. So go to the polling unit. And vote so that eventually, whoever you feel is right, will rule that state eventually. And I think above all, we're looking forward to see the voting in Imo, Bayelsa, and Kogisi to play out differently. That is, we want to see an improvement from INEC. And just as Mr. Shamal have said, we want to see a free, fair, and transparent election, the kind of election that Nigerians will trust, that the majority will tell anybody trying to make trouble that, you know what, this election was fair, you should take a chill pill or something like that, and then we just want to see improvement with INEG, and we just want to see a better outcome mm. of what is going to happen on November 11. Mm. Still on Sporting Sun, we have Arsenal ready to sell Havits for 40 million euros. You can find details inside the paper. And we have Garnacho escapes FA charges over social media post. Milan confirms talk with Ibrahimovic. You can find more details on page 3. And at the downside of the paper, we have Usyk agrees February date to face Fury in Saudi Arabia. Mbappe blasts Milan fans for fake dollar treatment. Um, you can find more details in the back page. And we have Casemiro tip to leave Man United in January for Saudi. And we have Messi reunite with Aguero in co-ownership deal. You can find more details at the back page. And that's all the news on Sporting Sun newspaper. And I think, Rachel, that's all we can take this morning. Thank you so much for doing this. You're welcome. Me. And thank you to our supporters. Thank you to old Mr. Shama who called in this morning. Thank you to our viewers. And to everyone out there, do remember that whoever we vote eventually is spent on us. And this is for those who will be voting in Imo, Bayelsa, and Koji State. Please try and be safe. When you're done voting, please leave the place or you can actually look from afar so you do not get into trouble. But until we come here again tomorrow, do have a blessed day ahead. Thank you.